Well, good morning and happy Sabbath. And for you Filipinos, the few Malagayang around on Sabado, so inyong lahat. It's good to be here. And it's nice to see so many friendly faces that I haven't seen for a long while. So on behalf of Sandra and I, uh, we'd like to thank you for inviting us and especially thank Pastor Tim for allowing us to share the work that we do. So thank you. So I'd like to start out with a little picture presentation just to show you the work that we do there in the Philippines. But first of all, we're a supporting ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and we present a series of programs that lead new people into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And who are we? In uh, Wonders of the Past Philippines comprises of myself, a retired financial planner, and Sandra, who is my personal assistant. And of course, during each campaign, we work very closely with the pastor appointed by the local church. And I'm also very conscious that I'm a lay person, so I always say to the pastor, look, if there's anything theologically that I, I need correcting on, please do so. If there's any way that you can suggest it to improve the program, please just say it. And I get lots of help uh, with improving the program. My theology has been 100% correct so far, but I'm always ready to be corrected. <laughs> um, so, and our mission is to prepare people for Jesus' return, to bring new members into the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to strengthen existing members. When we run a program, it's a revival meeting for the, for the local members. And the programs, the historical, Wonders of Egypt, Wonders of Petra, Babylon, Israel and Masada, we present prophecies and then we show the fulfilment. We want people to have absolute confidence in the Word of God. And then we move on to more current issues that are shown there, in, and um, the wonders of sun worship, and then we go on to the New World Order. The, this is preparing for the future. New beginnings, that's a baptism sermon. Signs of the end. We should all be aware of the signs of what's going to happen before Jesus returns. And our final message, that was preached only last Sabbath in the last campaign, the three angels message. God has called us, we're a special people. God has called us out of all the other churches to present this powerful message to prepare people for the return of Jesus. And we believe Jesus will come soon. So our partnership, we plan ahead, um, we um, appoint Bible workers, and they are there for three months before the campaign, generally doing Voice of Prophecy lessons. And then during the campaign, we work with the local churches. Um, there's preaching on three Sabbaths, and 13 evenings we do a presentation, then the all-day seminar and baptism, and we present Bibles. And then after care, we like to give Steps to Christ. That is a wonderful little book. By the time that the people have uh, had the Voice of Prophecy lessons and the wonders of the past, we, all of that is very heavily into doctrine. We want them to know Jesus and Steps to Christ is a beautiful way of doing that. And we've developed a study guide where a study leader can go through on a week-to-week -week basis and uh, just draw them out and get a discussion going get them to know Jesus better, and that's part of our nurture. So, and here, this was a campaign on a little island called Kalutkot, where we, we present, we like to present Bibles. A lot of people don't own Bibles. Some churches don't allow them to own Bibles. Now we've done 20 campaigns in the Philippines. We've undergone three church building projects, and there's 1,373 baptisms from the campaigns that we've, we've been involved in. And there's 702 this year alone. Oh, sorry, 2017. Now, places we've been, this, this is Mount Mayon <clears throat> in the Legaspi area. 
You might have seen it on television lately. It's been erupting. <coughs> Pardon me. This was the view from the uh, South Philippines conference or mission where we stayed. I just went up on the roof and there was Mayon and you can see the smoke uh, drifting from it. Where there's smoke, there's fire. That's me on the island of Kalutkot. We had a happy experience there. And this is another place of Pugawan, San Francisco. There were soldiers there at the beginning of our campaign and we're, we're always happy to have security. This beautiful building the community building was opened on the Sunday night, our campaign opened. We, we had to use a small church. The mayor was there, and I went up there and had a look, there were no more than 50 people. We had that building for every other uh, night and the two Sabbaths, and we never had less than 200 on a night, and there were 600 there on the last Sabbath. And, and you know what, it didn't cost us anything. God is just so wonderful. And you know, a year later a typhoon came through and destroyed that building. So God in his provision is marvellous. Now this was the baptism at Bukawan. <clears throat> there were 60 baptised. Now this was uh, last year, Pastor Tim went to Kagayan Diora in January. We were there in, this was November, December, November. This is a big church at the, uh, the conference office, North Philippine Conference Office. And we had the privilege of presenting our campaign there. It's a little bit like Warunga. And it's a beautiful church. There were five local churches. And Pastor Tao Tao, the fellow there, had been the publishing director uh, in Thailand. And now he's the Dean of the School of Literature Evangelists. <clears throat> and he had a theory that if you get local church members to go through Voice of Prophecy lessons with interests, and then those people bring the interests along to the campaign, then after the baptism, there's a strong connection between the newly baptised and the local church. So this this was the uh, baptism candidates at the end of our campaign. And there's Pastor Tao Tao and I making an appeal. Now the gentleman on your right, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit impressed on me to tell a little story. Pastor, Pastor Tao Tao asked me, do I have anything to say to the, the people to be baptised? And I told a story about Corrie Ten Boom when she was worried, how will I have the faith to face persecution? And her father said to her, Corrie, when you go on holidays, how do you travel? And Corrie said, well, by train. And he said, when do I give you the ticket? And she said, just before I get on the train. And anyway, that's... And Corrie said, God will give you the strength when you need it. Anyway, he was listening, that guy was listening, and his father started a fundamental Baptist church in, a, in another province a little way away. His brother is the pastor there, but he gave his heart to Jesus. And he, he's baptised. He's a, a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we just praise God. The guy on your left is a presenter at Hope Channel. And that's the wife of the newly baptised there. <clears throat> now this is a little church in, um, on the island of Mindanao. We did a campaign at a place called Magsaisai. And this was an initial baptism. These two were baptised in a little mountain village. And that was a presentation Bible. These were some singers at our campaign. This was at our, our campaign in Kagai and Dioro. There was a big Catholic church right at the back. <coughs> And when they heard us preaching about some of the things late in our program, I don't think they liked us because they prevented us from having that venue on baptism day. So we had an open air venue, we had to improvise. But as it turned out, the open air venue was 80 metres from the baptism site, and it was better anyway. So praise God, he brought a blessing out of that. 
We had a wonderful day there. That's a singing group called the, the Lark's Chorus. Now this is the baptism and the pastors praying there for the newly baptised and this couple are now active members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Magsaisai. Now, the third last campaign we did was on a little island called Patnanungan, which is in Quezon province where Zandra lives and that's, that's one of those horrible marine stingers. And this was on baptism day. Like they were cleared out of the water, which was just to the side of where this fellow is. <clears throat> and these are people going down. This lady is over 80 years of age. It's always good to see older people give their heart to Jesus. As well as young people. This is uh, uh, Pastor, I can't think, uh, Robles. He loves fishing. He loves fishing, just as fishing for fish as well as people, I think. Um, it's funny, we bought him a spear gun. Once he gets in the water, he never wants to get out. <laughs> um, this was the people that were baptised there, and that's a result of what happens if you tangle with one of those marine stingers. They're pretty, pretty awful. We're in Gloria, um, Oriental Mindora. I think that's where Ricky comes from, yeah. And uh, this is Sandra giving a, a talk in that church. And this was the baptism at Gloria. Now last Sabbath, this was last Sabbath, that girl with the microphone, the girl with the white blouse, she was an Ecclesia Ni Cristo. And the big sticking point, the Ecclesia Ni Cristo um, denied the divinity of Jesus. And anyway, Pastor um, Flores, who is the uh, Ministerial Secretary of South Central Luzon Conference, he had lots of conversations with her about Jesus. I am the Word. He used that introduction in the book of John very exclusively. And she could see the Holy Spirit convicted this girl. Pastor Flores said, look, we Seventh-day Adventists believe Jesus was a man, but we also believe he was God. And he said, pray. Anyway, the Holy Spirit convicted her and she was baptised. And this was her. She's so happy. She's found the truth. And now she's on the right path. Now this is Sandra and I. Last year we went through a place called Magindanao in, um, Min in Mindanao. Magindanao in Mindanao. We had to go through the uh, Muslim Autonomous Zone and we had to put on that headgear so we'd look like the locals. And, um, because we would like to do a campaign this year in this place, which isn't all that far from, from that other region. We hope to do a nine day campaign there. Now where we stayed? We stayed in this little place here. Um, we actually, Sandra and I actually bought the rights to this so that the local people could use this as a church. I think we slept on a wooden, a wooden table that night. We went over there on that day, we took the photo. Um, this is another place, this is Patna Nungan, you can see the, the iron roof. Um, if you look over here, that green thing, sorry my hand's a bit wobbly, I take this portable clothesline with me everywhere, it's invaluable, because quite often there's nowhere to hang anything. And anyway, the other side of this curtain, there are three people sleeping. There were five of us in that room. It was as hot as anything. You can see the, the iron roof. So I think we roughed it for those two weeks. All the water came out of a tank. You had to use a tab out to wash yourself. Where did you go to the toilet? We, we like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you, Robin, so... <laughs> Tell me later. <laughs> uh, this is at another place where we did a church building project. We did a campaign here and there were 86 baptised here. This is Sandra and the pastor's wife doing a bit of washing. I think they're, they're, they're happy people over there, you know. And travelling around, we travelled on one of those little boats about two and a half hours to get out to this island. It's okay this time, it's okay in the summer, but in the winter it's very rough, it's, it could be dangerous going there. Now this is an agricultural machine on Mindoro, 
And uh, you see sometimes 15 to 20 people on the back of one of them travelling along the highway. This is called a hubble hubble. And um, I was sitting there, we went up this bumpy mountain road and I can tell you I was praying the whole time. <laughs> Without ceasing. And that was the past, Pastor Duroy, Pastor June on the other side and Zander on the back. And we had a pile of Bibles on there too. This is, we all rode in this little uh, truck on another occasion, about 20 or 30 people in the back. And this is the motor vehicle Jassel in Ma'uban. And sometimes Sandra and I go from Ma'uban to where Sandra's mum lives in that boat, seven hours. Creature comforts. <laughs> now this, it's got a 125cc motor, it's got 15 bags of cement on it and there was myself and the driver and we went up quite a steep hill. It's amazing what those little bikes can carry. We were doing a church renovation and this is another, this is little boys on another island, this is a carabao pulling the garbage truck. <clears throat> now workers, see this guy here wouldn't be any more than 70 kilograms. He'd be carrying 60 kilograms of copra across this gangplank and then there's another gangplank at the back of this truck and time after time he'll go across there. They've got fantastic balance and they're so strong. I used to think Filipinos were lazy. They're not. They are very hard working people. <clears throat> and there he was coming up to toss that onto the truck. Now these, remember I showed you the marine stinger, this is the same place. <clears throat> this water is riddled with these stingers, but they roll the, they roll the bags, the uh, barrels of crude oil off the boat, they swim them ashore, and that rope is in a big loop. They stand on one end up here on the wharf, and they put the, the other loops around there and they pull them up. And all the time there's a guy singing, it's like a sea shanty. So they're pulling together. Oh, pulling. Yeah, like yeah, back on back on this side here, there's a guy singing and up it comes. The kids are so delightful. This little girl uh, was the lead singer. We had a campaign song. And she was a terrific little singer, so we gave her the mic. And all the kids joined in and they were so happy. The little girl there arrived one night with a little bag at Sandra and she announced to Sandra and I that we were now going to be her mum and dad. Aww. She was leaving home to come with us. <laughs> her mum came and rescued her later. <laughs> and these three little girls are so funny, they're all about 10 or 11 and Sandra sometimes calls me Cherie and I'd hear Cherie. I go outside and it was those little urchins. <laughs> and this, she used to call me darling sometimes and I said, how many boyfriends you got? Three? And I said, can I be your boyfriend? She said, no. And I said, why not? She said, you're too old. <laughs> They're so funny. They're just beautiful, those children. And I wanted to go up to this uh, kind of hill and these boys were my pathfinders. They're real characters. With another group of kids, two, young, two teenagers, Oh, at our last campaign the tricycle crashed on the way home and he got injured, but he was there the next night. It didn't worry him. Oh, and this little girl here, her name is Maddie, she's five. She took lots of our photographs and this little girl, Diane, she wanted to adopt us too. She wanted to come to Australia with us. Anyway, they're so beautiful. Now, church building. In February last year we did a campaign there was a small church here and 86 were baptised. So they decided they'd knock down that church and rebuild a bigger one. This was the bigger one. The project was abandoned by the builder so I went over there with Pastor Florius and we took some workers over there, skilled workers, and we set to work and the front was extended. We put wall cladding or tiles on the front. We put those doors there, fabricated those doors and uh, window um, grills on the windows. These ladies are putting tile adhesive on the back of the tiles there. They had a big working bee. 
one Sunday and we tiled the whole interior. Um, I got some people that that helped me. I'm just blessed with that. So the one that that's the oneness of the path that we we operate. No, I want to start on the sermon. He led with me. I just would like to say a little prayer before we start out. Dear Lord, please uh, be with us as we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So he leadeth me. Here we were after the campaign at Patna That's the assistant path, the closest to the camera. There's some of the tombs, Andrew and I. Everyone was very happy. And we were sailing back, and I'm looking out at the horizon. I don't know whether you've ever, this has ever happened to you. You look and you think, I've been here before. I've done this before. Have you ever had that? And you know what? I realised that when I was about 10 years of age, I dreamt that I'd be doing something like this. Except my dream was that I'd be in the Royal Australian Navy, which I tried to join when I was 16, but I found out I was deaf. So I couldn't get into the Navy. And but we know that all things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, I didn't know that God was leading me. I became an insurance agent in 1974, and this company was the enemy. I used to work for National Mutual. And then later on, National Mutual got taken over by AXA. And then later on, AXA Asia Pacific sold their business and AMP took over. So I ended up working for the AMP for the last three and a half years. And it was a very happy marriage between those companies actually. And um, you get a fantastic view from up on the top floor there, it overlooks Circular Quay. Um, so in 2010 I had a very, very unhappy time in my life. Some of you that know me uh, know that I went through a very difficult time. I lost at the time I was married, that broke up. I lost my home and I lost my job. So I was 64 years of age and I think you'd think that was a crisis. So I completely surrendered my life to God. I said, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be who you want me to be. I mightn't be much, but I'm yours. So, um, and this became very important to me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto thee, and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. I, I really took that, that became part of me. Now, Pastor Stephen Jakovac uh, was running, I was supporting him doing evangelism, and he said, look, you should come with me. He said, think of ten, ten, ten. And that was, he was running a campaign in Ghana, West Africa, commencing on the 10th of October 2010. So I heard this voice say, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> and I went. And we had a fantastic journey there. Instead of just flying across to South Africa, we went down and flew across the ice shelf of Antarctica for two and a half hours and saw all the fantastic ice down there and then up to Johannesburg. And Johannesburg, South Africa, was an amazing place. We stopped there twice. It was either there, on the way there, I think we went to Pretoria, uh, which has got lots of jack around. It's a little bit like Grafton in northern New South Wales. On the way back, we went to Soweto. And of course, we, read a, we heard a lot about Soweto, didn't we, during the struggle for independence. And what happened? the South African government <clears throat> imposed this language, Afrikaans, on the black people and they didn't want to learn Afrikaans. That was, they, that was the, the race of the, the uh, language of the oppressors. And so the school children in Soweto were protesting. Now when they protest, they don't break things, they usually sing and dance. And they're singing and dancing and protesting in Soweto there's a, a low line of hills just above the houses and that's where the police were. The police opened fire and they shot <clears throat> this little boy. Um, his name is Peterson. And this was his older brother and sister. 
<clears throat> and there's a memo the Hector Peterson Memorial Park, that's what we visited. And groups of school children go through there and there's just something almost sacred about that place. I'll never forget going there and seeing that photograph. And that, that was the beginning of their protest. Then after that, we went on to Ghana in West Africa. Now this was called the Cape Coast Fort and it was built by the Dutch and hundreds of thousands of uh, the local people were captured and they were kept in cells underground for about six months. They were chained together, they were branded and then a ship would come and they would go out through this door, the door of no return. They were slaves in the New World, in America and Europe. And so that's another place I'll never forget. It just, places like this can have an impact on you. <clears throat> this, these were the local people there in, in Ghana. And these were people who we came to free from the bondage of Satan. These were people who were baptised. And that was the first campaign that I ever did. <coughs> now seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In 2011 11, I went to Kenya in East Africa, and then 2013 Verdeos, and I met Zandra there, but we, there was no romance or anything. But later on in Christmas time I went back and I got to know Zandra, and in 2014, and so I thought, but she's so young. And then I thought, well hang on, you're seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. And I realised that God had put us together. We are an amazing team. You know, we both got the same birthday, the 4th of July. And uh, I couldn't do what I do without Sandra. She, I mean, we can travel all over the Philippines in little, um, all kinds of transport. Uh, she helps me with the presentations. She's the, pres the uh, interpreter sometimes. Uh, she does the health lectures sometimes, children's story. Um, I couldn't do it without her, so she's just fantastic. So we married then, and 2018 we did our 22nd, and we just done our 22nd Wonders of the Past campaign. And that was our last Sabbath over in Fami Laguna. <laughs> well, that's a barong. <laughs> um, now, we both love this verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give, give you hope and a future. That's a wonderful promise. And re we must remember that God knew us before we were born. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We know the past and, the pres and experience the present, but God knows the past, present and the future. And God's plans are so much better than anything that we could ever imagine. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't have imagined when I was younger doing what I'm doing now. God's plan is so much better than anything I could have imagined. So, and God walks with us through all of our trials. Now my life experience prepared me to serve God. I used to go fishing to this place on the central coast that's called Little Beach. And Little Beach itself is round the corner. If you walk around there, there is a small beach around there. And sometimes surfers love it when the waves come in for, from a certain direction, they really get big. But I had a, I've got a very good friend, Lachlan, and he and I used to walk in 800 metres down to the beach and we used to walk along here to the spot just there. And we camped there. It's a wonderful place. That night you'd see a few lights from a house behind where the photograph is taken and maybe some lights out in the ships and wake up on Sunday morning just in that natural environment. It was just magic. I loved it. We did that for 32 years. I only stopped about 10 years ago. We used to gather water. There's a spring that comes down the back here. I've still got a bit of stuff stashed around there. I might go and get it one day. <laughs> anyway. Um, but this prepared me. When, when we got asleep, like on, on the floor or uh, in a really rough place, that prepared me for that. That was training. I didn't realise that at the time. And then um, 
for many years, from when I was 28 to 50, I was 50, I used to run uh, six days a week. I went in the city to surf nine times. And because I always wanted to have a fit, healthy body when I retired, so I'd have lots of years of doing what I want to do, which I'm doing now, which God wants me to do more specifically. Now, I just want to finish by talking about a reluctant messenger. And I think we've read about this fellow before. His name was Jonah, wasn't he? He was given a job, go to this city, Nineveh. He was scared. No, I'm not going there, I'm going to run. So we know he got on a ship, a storm came up, they realised he was the problem, throw me overboard. God sent this whale, didn't he, to swallow Jonah. So Jonah stopped running, he had no choice. In the belly of the whale he looked up, probably didn't see much, but he prayed. And Jonah 2 verse 7, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. So when life goes down, our prayers go up. Lord, please help me understand this situation. This was my prayer in 2010. <clears throat> Lord, please give me tools, give me the tools to solve this problem. You know, when I prayed that prayer, it was like a light was switched on in my, in my mind. And then sometimes, I don't know whether you've experienced this, you pray and pray and pray and nothing seems to happen. So I learned to pray a prayer then Lord, please give me a prayer that you can answer. Sometimes God can't answer our prayers, we make it impossible. But I wanted God, please give me a prayer. Help me pray a prayer to you that you can answer to help me. And that was wonderful too. So, when life goes down, our prayers go up. And prayer is a conversation and prayer involves, conversations involve talking and listening, don't they? Wouldn't be much of a conversation, just one person talking. Now, have you ever tried just to listen to God? I just wanted to share, I used to go onto the golf course at Malabar and sit there looking out at the ships. And I prayed and prayed and prayed and then I got to the end I'd say, Dear Lord, I'm just going to sit here for 30 minutes. I'm not going to say anything or think anything. Please communicate with me. And, and God did give me give me the messages. But I can highly recommend it. If we listen, God will speak to us. But we, we've got to prepare ourselves to hear. Now, is God calling you to share the good news? He may place us in the belly of a whale of difficulties. Our prayers need to go up. And the first person God preaches the message to is the preacher. Us. We have to be converted first. So are you stuck in the belly of a whale right now? Don't worry. God often places us in this situation to prepare us for a greater work. Jonah, the recipient of God's mercy, preached a powerful message in Nineveh. Now, I tried to get some pictures, but all the pictures had a man with hair. I think Jonah was as white as a sheet. I, didn't, I don't think he had a hair left on his head. He was an albino because three days in all that acid would have bleached him. That's what happened to this man who fell in, who was swallowed by a whale in the 18th century. So Jonah was a message without even opening his mouth. Imagine that, if you knew, oh, there was somebody here who had been swallowed by a whale, you'd be interested to have a look. So, Jonah had a powerful message before he even opened his mouth, and he preached that message that destruction was coming, and from the greatest to the least, the people of, of Nineveh listened, and the people of Nineveh repented. And we know that Joseph was, sorry, we know that Jonah was a little bit disappointed that they weren't going to go up in a flash. Now, God can use us in a powerful way. I know who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. I read that somewhere, but I believe. Have you ever done, ever listened? Sometimes people talk, but 
it's all the other parts of the communication are powerful, aren't they? Okay, transformed lives shout about the power of God. In the Philippines, people listen to me because I'm a foreigner. And I use this advantage to lift up the name of Jesus. And by the way, you don't have to go looking for a whale. The whale will come looking for you. When you're swallowed up by the trials of life, your head will go down and your prayers will go up. And in God's perfect time, he, you will be taken to your place of ministry to live a powerful life in witness to others. Now Sandra and I have got a special prayer. We didn't make it up, we got it straight from Steps to Christ. There's a chapter there, Growing into Christ. I think it's chapter 8. And we pray this every morning, except we say us, Take us, O Lord, as holy thine. Use us today in your service. And it's amazing how God can use you in his service if you ask him to do that. I lay all my plans, or we lay all our plans at your feet. Now quite often, our plans don't work out, but we realise, hey, our, our plans aren't working out because God has got a better plan. And so, and that's always the case. God's way is always best. Abide in me. If we pray this before the Lord, we pray the Lord's Prayer, we, we say, forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, fill us with your Holy Spirit, abide in us. And let all of our work be wrought in thee. That's a beautiful prayer of commitment, and we can highly recommend it. Steps across, it's chapter 8. <clears throat> now let's return to the story of Jonah. And I can thank Xander for reminding me to put this in. God used an imperfect man to convert a whole city. And chapter 3 of this four-chapter book ends with the conversion of Nineveh. God was not finished with Jonah. Chapter 4 tells the story of Jonah's conversion. The evangelist had to be converted. God wasn't finished until the evangelist was converted. Now, like Jonah, I'm far from perfect. I don't know I'm sure there's nobody perfect here. And God is working on me while I'm busy working for him. And it's a beautiful arrangement. May God bless you as you discover his will for your life. Amen.